Evan Lancaster. What's really going on, bruh? <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny, and this is Ambition Season 1, Episode 4. And the name of this episode is Reap What You Sue. And yeah, this was a really damn good episode. As I said before, I'm a huge fan of this new show. Each episode has literally had me at the edge of my seat, and I'm so here for Ambitions. So let's begin. Amara. Amara is um, having this um, dream about her screwing Damien Collins. She wakes up from it, so obviously Damien Collins is still on her mind. So we see that she asks, she goes, she looks for Titus, and she sees that Titus is gone, but his phone is on the um, is on the nightstand. She checks the phone and see that uh, Stephanie's still texting him. So she goes through the whole house screaming for Titus and all this shit. And the next thing you know, she hits the living room. She sees that Titus is Titus and Stephanie are screwing a hole in the floor. And Stephanie, while she on top of them talking shit like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, you always wanted to be me, but you can't compete. And then all of a sudden, Titus is like, yeah, baby, she is so much better than you. And then all of a sudden, we see that damn Amara flips out. She's like, get off! Get off! Get off! And we come to find out it's a nightmare, you know. And she's actually in bed with Titus. So all this is going on. She's thinking about Damon Collins, you know, because Damon done put it on her ass. I mean, Damien. And then she's also thinking about Stephanie screwing her husband. <laughs> I'm like, damn, Amara. Your damn dreams are crazy as shit. But he, she wakes up and actually sees that it was a dream. And, you know, um, Titus is there to comfort her. So then we get what's going on. Because pretty much while that's going on down in Birmingham, Alabama, we saw in the last episode, Stephanie's old messy ass that made a trip down there to dig up Damien Collins. And Damien is clearly flirting with her because, you know, Stephanie's gorgeous. And he's like, oh, yes, I would have done anything, you know, to meet the, the, the gorgeous Stephanie Lancaster. Mm, you entice me. But she pretty much says that, look, I'm not here for all that. I'm here to offer you a job, you know, with my family's firm. But then he says that, come on, honey. You really came out here to offer me a job? I know the reason why you're here. And if anything, I did some research on you. I already know that you know Amari Hughes. Y'all went to college together and y'all were sorority sisters. Um, and she was like, oh, yeah? Well, since we want to tell truths, I also know you had an affair with Amara, too. And he denies it. And he was like, you know what? I ain't, I, I, I came because how could I not want to meet the beautiful Stephanie, you know, Carlisle Lancaster? But now that's off my bucket list, I'm out this bitch. And then she mentions the name Lester Herndon. Uh-huh. Yeah, you planted evidence on him and got him locked up for a crime he didn't commit all because you wanted the woman he was with. And it's funny because after you got her ass, you end up dumping her for Amara. And she's like, oh yes, here's a police report. With just one phone call, I can ruin everything for you. And you will never be able to pick up the pieces. And he was like, who the hell do you think you are? And she bl she bluntly told him, I'm the woman who's going to destroy your life and not give you another thought. So either you work with me or you can keep pissing me off and I can turn your ass in. So all of a sudden he's like, so what do you want me to do? She's like, I want you to get back into a moral's world. And, she's like, and he's like, what if I say no? Oh, you will say yeah. And like and she's like, oh, but you'll do it. You'll have until tomorrow 
before I blow up your entire world. So, uh, I expect to hear back from you. And I'm like, that damn Stephanie is one cold bitch. Like, she went all the way to Alabama to straight blackmail and get him to do her bidding. Like, she's a piece of work. So then, we see that Titus has a meeting with Hunter Purifoy. And Titus at first immediately starts like, is this about Lori? He was like, hell no, it ain't about no damn Lori. My, I know how my child is. She's a wild child. <laughs> there are more problems. There are bigger problems than her ass. But now, um, but then he says that, no, the reason why I called you in here is because the case against the Carlisles. You know, they're not, they're not setting a price yet, but we know that they're about to come for us, and we need to be ready, and we need to make some moves. And Hunter pretty much says that, uh, there's a judge, Alton Waits, you know, he's sympathetic to big companies, you know, like ours, you know, but I need you to go see, um, I need you to go see this, um, judge, um, Millstop, you know, because Millstop, you know, for a little piece of change, he's willing to do things in our favor and we can maneuver this the way we want it, you know. And he was like, uh-uh, I am not going to bribe a judge. Um, so Titus pretty much is dancing against it. And then Hunter was like, you do what I tell you to do. And he was like, excuse me? He pretty much lets, um, lets Hunter know, I will win due to my intelligence and integrity. Do you know why I took this job with you? He's like, yeah, because I'm paying you a buckload of money. He was like, no. My mother took Lemadol for her condition. And because of that, at first she couldn't she couldn't even get out of bed. But after taking the Lumadol, she began to live again. You know, before, you know, he's saying that, look, yeah, opioids can be dangerous, but they also save lives. So that's why I decided to take this job on. You know. Um, so Pretty much, he was like, and then all of a sudden, Pure Four was like, oh, that touches my heart. I'm like, you sinister bastard. And then he was like, you know, but then he kind of lets Titus know, but the thing is, in the game of Atlanta, you get ahead with cash, not rhetoric. And he pretty much says that, look, you got an appointment with Dave, you know, you need to get meal stop to get weight, you know, on, on board, and you need to close the deal. And he's like, and Titus was like, fine, but I'll do it my way. And he was like, I don't give a damn how you do it. Just get it done. So then we see Bella is with um, her friend Perla. She's, you know, trying on one of her designs. Bella's in her fucking feelings because I'm about to roast the shit out of Bella on this episode. So beware because Bella's a stupid bitch. She really is. Bella is in her feelings because Evan won't respond to her. And I'm like, what makes you think he was going to respond to you after you screwed Roderick right there on the couch when you knew Evan was right there? Like, bitch, what makes you think? And, and she knew that that shit hurt him. So what makes you think? Because you know, Evan is a simple asshole and he's sensitive as shit. And when he get in his feelings, he acts like a big ass bitch. And we see this is what he's doing because we see in this episode, she was literally begging and like, I'm sorry, baby, talk to me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Stop ignoring me. Uh, 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 uh. I'm like, shut up, bitch. Pathetic as hell. And, and pretty much, you know, he won't respond to me. And she's like, I feel guilty about Roderick. So we already know. Roderick's in love with her, but she just sees Roderick as a... Roderick is just a tool that she used at her disposal. She's really in love with Evan. Um, but then, you know, Perla was like, well, regardless of the fact, he came up here to dump you, right? And she says, like, um... And then she also mentions, like, look, look how the way this guy's been treating you. You know, he came up here to dump you, and don't even... Don't let me begin about Joaquin. 
So she knows that Joaquin is her son, but I don't even think her own mother even knows that Evan is the father of Joaquin. So I'm like, that's going to be some shit. Um, and she pretty much, and um, Perla just tells Bella, like, look, right now you need to be thinking about yourself. And she was like, you know, you should be trying to get that, you know, get that airport space. And that what she was trying to do? She's like, well, yes, that was the reason why this whole thing started between us. You know, I was going to be the queen of the fashion world and he would be governor. You know, we would be the perfect couple. You stupid, naive bitch. He's married to a Carlisle. Him and Stephanie are like the Beyonce and Jay-Z of Atlanta. They are a power couple like no other. He is not going to dump her for you. Because if you weren't so fucking dumb, you will know that people get married for two reasons. One, people get married for love. And then you got some who get married for stability. They... He is married to Stephanie for stability because Stephanie comes from the white collar family. She is the money. She is the access. He is mayor because of his connection to Stephanie. He is just fucking you and selling you a whole bunch of lies and bullshit because you a gullible bitch who just likes being a side chick. And... You ain't even getting the fact that when you are a side chick and you have a child, the child is a side child as well. Because he's not giving Joaquin the love and affection that he's giving his other children. So it's like she ain't even peeping the game. But old girl's trying to say that, look, you need to be focused on yourself. You know, he's not going to leave his wife. You know, forget the mayor, use what you got, and get on with your shit. Leave his ass alone. Homegirl trying to tell her some shit, but here go Bella texting him, like, you know, what? stop ignoring me and shit. So I'm just like, this damn girl is sad. And I have to say, what happens to her in this episode, she deserves everything, and I don't feel sorry for her not one damn bit. So then we see that Amara is at Thelma's place trying some of that good food and she's chatting it up with Rondell. You know, they bonding over food because, you know, Amara's from Houston. So she knows what it's like to, you know, to come from the bottom. And she's never forgotten her roots. So her and Rondell, they instantly clicked when they met at the gala. So she's eating or whatever and she was saying that, you know, so, you know... So, like, you know, the mayor's your brother. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't, you know, decided to invest in your business. You know, and Rondale, you know, is very protective of her baby brother, Evan. And that's pretty much the problem because Evan, Evan is a, Evan got some fucking issues. Seriously. And you don't even realize that he in bed with the motherfucker who's trying to take your family's business. Because she's kind of naive to that. And pretty much, she kind of tells Amara, like, look, if you want to kick it and talk about food and everything, that's cool. But if you here trying to get dirt on my brother, and then all of a sudden, we see Stephanie comes in, smelling herself, coming there, looking for Junior. And she notices that Amara's there. She's like, oh, hmm. So I see you still trying to sample on things that are mine. I'm like, Stephanie, if you don't cut that shit out, like, she's just got it out. For Amara because she wants Amara's man. You know. She's trying to steal the bastard back. Literally. So. But she says that you know what. I'll come back when, when um Senior's here. Senior comes out. He's like oh yeah I'm here. You know. And um, I thought about it. And um, you know I'm not selling. You know. Hey what can I say. The kids talk me out of it. And then Ronald was like yes. Me and Evan. Um. So he turns her down, and she pretty much says that, well, I'll come back and talk to you later. You know, maybe something may happen that may change your mind. But have a wonderful, 
and productive day. And and then all of a sudden, <laughs> that damn Rontel be going in on fucking Stephanie. She was like, oh, Stephanie, won't you come back later for my um shrimp and grits special? It'll turn your pancake into an apple bottle. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I love me some Rondell. And she pretty much tells him that, um, and pretty much Amira and Rondell talk, and she brings up Greg Peters, that he's trying to take the restaurant and that he's a snake and all of that. And Amara's like, won't you tell me more? She's like, okay, well, um, I got some peach pie. And she's like, well, hey, I want that peach pie, so let me know what's up. So they start talking about Greg. Then we see that Evan is meeting with Marvin and Marilyn. You know, they're... Co you know, Carly is supposed to be dating their son Khalil, but they really want him to take his company, which is called Better New Electronics, which is doing very big in China. They want him to bring it to Atlanta, which will create a whole network of jobs and it will boost the economy. You know, they, they're kind of entertaining the idea, but they're not giving him any definite answers. Um... And then, pretty much, uh, he was saying that, but think about it. It will be great because it'll be close, you know, to Morehouse where Khalil's a student. And you can, you guys can be, you guys can always be close with him. And they was like, oh, child, Khalil only calls us when he needs money. And, you know, Evan says, yeah, it's the same thing with Trey and Carly. They see us as ATMs. You know, so we actually come to find out that Stephanie and um, Evan have a son as well named Trey. And so we just haven't met Trey yet, but we probably will meet him down the line. And probably Trey stays away because Trey can't stand either one of their asses. They are such a fucking dysfunctional family. It's ridiculous. So then um, we see that Stephanie comes in and she greets them. But while that's going on, Evan gets a text from motherfucking um, Bella. And the text is him and his um, man meet. You know, the pictures that she was taking while, you know, the night of the gala when they was having sex. And you remember she was in the bed taking photos and she got a video too. So Bella's like, oh, you gonna ignore me? I'm gonna pull a stunt on your ass. And I'm like, Bella, bad move, bitch. Bad move. <laughs> And we gonna see why. <laughs> so we see that um, we see that Amara is actually talking to her colleague at work. Um, I think her name is Jamie. I think um, they discuss Thelma's restaurant. She also discussed talking to Roundell and that she's Mayor Evan Lancaster's sister. They also discuss him, and um, you know. And she let it be known that, look, Rondell has no connection to her brother's political affiliates or whatever. She pretty much, they pretty much run that restaurant and Evan doesn't help them with anything. So they say that, you know, what she's doing is legit. But here it is, Evan has got all this going on. But then she did mention this guy, Greg Peters. And my whole thing is that how is this guy able to continue to do this, you know, to them when yet her brother's the mayor what's really going on there so the wheels are starting to turn and then also she mentions that yeah you know so it makes me question you know Stephanie and Greg Peters you know you know cuz you know Stephanie is trying to buy Thelma's restaurant and here it is you got Greg Peters who she says has been threatening her and she and she's pretty much saying that it's it's pretty much kind of looking like does Greg have the mayor in his back pocket? And if you watch episode one, you know he does. And they've got a lot of dealings with him. And the question is, is Stephanie involved? And Amara's like, well, I'm gonna find out and ask her myself. So then we see that Titus goes to see Millsap, you know. He talks about Judge Waits and, you know, um, and he discussed why he, why he, sh you know, would want to hear their case, you know, due to them being a big corporation and everything. And, you know, while 
Titus is talking to him, he literally just walks up and starts patting him down like, you know, like he's searching him and shit. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then he pretty much tells him that, I, um, look, I, got a, I have a lake house and I got a leak in my roof. Tell Hunter to fix my leak and maybe I can get weight, you know, to take the case. So many, he kind of letting me know it's going to be like a play, a pay for play type of situation. So, but Titus kind of was looking like, what the fuck is going on here? So it's like, y'all, y'all really playing games. And we're seeing that Titus is bothered by that. Because one, he definitely felt the fact that he patted them down. That was some straight up racial profiling, which it was. I mean, even though he's in this high position they still are kind of reminding him that he's a Negro in their own subtle way. Liberal racism. So, definitely we can tell that made Titus feel some kind of way. So then, we see that um, Stephanie and Evan talk about, you know, the Beta New Project and, you know, she was saying that, yeah, but the thing is, I was trying to, I was talking to Marvin, but I can't really crack him. I don't really know what the hell he's thinking. Well, Stanley's like, well, I'll talk to Marilyn. I'll get to the bottom of it. And, and but she was saying, but now that I'm on to something, I told your ass to stay out of the whole situation when them was placed, but you got in my way. Um, and then she was saying that, you know, you know, what's going to happen now that you cross Greg Peters you know, he is going to chew you up in little... He's going to, you know, cut you into little pieces. And I'm going to sit back and eat popcorn. I'm like, bitch! She don't give no fucks about Evan whatsoever. And besides... And he, But he said that, look... Sorry about that, y'all. But then, um... He was like... But then, um... Stephanie was like, well, um... Hmm. Well, I'm sorry... Evan was like, well, uh, as soon as um, I get this Belt and New project, I'm cutting Greg off. And he was like, I don't think that would be wise, honey. You're tied to too many deals with him. And and then she's like, but um, so then pretty much um, she walks out and he was like, where you going? She's like, I got a class action suit to begin. And she's like, oh, yeah, you know, the class action where you're about to take 900 jobs away. And then she says, well, I'll tell you what, land that belt a new project and that can make up for that. I'm like, they are just so shrewd and they give no fucks about nothing but their own personal gain. So Stephanie, at, Stephanie goes to press and pretty much asks, and she pretty much says that they're, you know, asking for a $5 million lawsuit against the Purifoys. And... And pretty much we see that Titus has just left Millsap's office and he sees her doing this press conference announcing them taking Purifoy to trial. And then we see that Purifoy is watching on TV and she says that, look, this is for the good of the people. This is not a personal vendetta. And that damn Hunter was like, you lying, bitch. I was like, oh, shit. And then after she's done, she walks off. Titus, she notices Titus too, and Titus notices her. But after she's done, she walks away, and then they come and ask Titus, because they know Titus is representing the Pure Voice. And he says that, look, the Pure Voice have done nothing wrong, and I have nothing further to say at this time. And he just walks off. Um, and then we see um, when Stephanie gets to her car, she calls Nick about Damian Collins, like, yeah, he's supposed to show up here, and if he ain't here within. You know, if time is almost up, and if he ain't here, then yeah, we about to. I'm about to shut his world down. And before she, and before she could get make it happen, Damien got in the car. Um. And then all of a sudden, he pretty Damien says that look, I did a favor locking her and up. You had no idea what dirty mess he was up against. She's like, who gives a shit? You know. And he's saying that you know what. All this time I was thinking, you wanted me to do this, you know, to 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 um to get at Amara, but I'm thinking 
you want to do this so you can throw Titus off his game because he is, you know, going against you in court. And she says that, first of all, don't worry about that. What your job is, is that I want you to aim at that marriage with everything you have. Because I can definitely tell that Amara is still special to you. And at the end of the day, we'll both win. Yeah, he can get Amara and she can get Titus. That's the plan. Throw that, throw that wrench in. Get Amara back because Amara still got feelings for his ass. She's still thinking about him. So Damien was putting it down on Amara. <laughs> so the so then we see that um, Rondell leads a demonstration. You know, the banks are not for sale. You know, against um, Greg and his developments. Greg gets the police. And they pretty much tell her that she needs to move the demonstration and they need to disperse or they're going to be, they're going to call backup and they'll be arrested. And then we see that Greg and Rondell go back and forth and she's saying that he's telling her to move off my property. And she says that, no, you're not going to take my family's business and you're not going to take my, mo take my neighborhood. And he says, tells, and he tells the officer, can you move this trash? I was like, ooh, really? And they was about to handcuff Rondell until one of the um one of the demonstrators was like, "You gonna arrest the mayor's sister?" And they was like, "Oh shit!" Oh, they immediately ain't handcuffed us. Like, oh, I apologize, ma'am. Look, y'all can move to the sidewalk, but um, but yeah, as long as y'all not in the street, y'all fine. Oh, she immediately changed that tune when she found out that. You know, Rondell was Evan's sister. Because if she would have arrested Rondell, oh, that would have been her fucking job. She would have been on the unemployment on the she would have her ass would have been on the unemployment line like that. And she knew that shit. So all of a sudden we see that they going back and she's still going back and forth with um Greg and calling him a money hungry swine, you know, and Greg pretty much threatens her says that the countdown the countdown on you has just started and she got in his face and was like tick damn talk you know so <laughs> she let it be known she ain't gonna be moved so then we see that Bella is in this back alley and she gets in the car to meet with Evan so Evan pretty much got her meeting in this little secret secret situation but Bella doesn't know that Amara's on to him and he's trying to protect her so that Amara won't come for her um so she's like what the hell is going on you know with you know meet me in back alleys and shit he's like because I don't trust you and he says when did you take that picture she says the night of the gala you know and she says you made me go and, and she was like but you made me go there you dumped me and he's like, man, I could never have dumped you. I'm trying to protect you. You know, I had my happiest moments of my life with you. You know, but you want to be with this Roderick. You know, and he's, but she's like, but you dumped me. He's like, I didn't dump you. I said that it was only temporarily. I just said we need to cool off because of what's going on. You know, and she was like, you know what? I have wasted years of my life with you. And if you can't be there for me, Roderick will. And then she says, well, then he's an idiot. You know, and he pretty much says that, look, do what you need to do. And then she was like, you know what? I'm over this shit. Because when it comes down to your business, when it comes down to business and you getting things happening for people, you'll pull strings for your friends, but you ain't doing that for me or your son. And he kind of lets her know that, boo-boo, this ain't Instagram. Concessions have a review board, and they want figures, they want everything. You just can't push like, and they're going to roll the red carpet out for you. So I'm going to let you know right here, you're not getting a damn concession. And, and she was like, well, I'm going to make it happen my way. And he was like, don't make me save me. Don't, don't make me save you from yourself because I can make your life a living hell also. Um, and she pretty much says that, well, you can't stop me. And he's like, don't challenge me. You'll lose. And she gets out that car. And let's just see. Um, let's just say 
she gonna find out real quick how he moves. And he a simple son of a bitch. That's all I gotta say about it. But I'm gonna have to get to it. So therefore, we see that Amara goes to see Stephanie. Um, and Amara, and immediately Stephanie's like, oh, so you here because of the rant of my dumbass sister-in-law? You know... You know, but, you know, Amara's like, well, no, but if anything, she needs to be safe in her place of business. And she mentions Greg Peters, you know, and his intimidation tactics. And she's like, you know what? Those act, those, those things are baseless. And I don't need your, you know, I don't need your self-righteous ass coming down to my firm confronting me about this. And she's like, look, I'm just here to warn you about Peters. Because every page in his book gets worse. And and she was like, yeah. And you obviously believed my crazy ass sister-in-law. You know you always had a... You always were a sucker for the dumb and helpless. I'm like, you evil bitch. Like, damn. <laughs> like, Stephanie has no qualms <laughs> when it comes down to her shit. Like, she don't give a damn. And then she lets um, Stephanie know that Peter's on our radar. So she pretty much tells her that uh, you need to leave my firm. And tries to call her assistant to get her to leave. And Amara's like, I know the way out, bitch. <laughs> and just got up out of there. So then we see that Titus and Hunter re-meet. And, Tit and Hunter said, I saw you on TV. You know, you did good, you know. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, but I also want to let you know, Hunter, I never got packed down by a judge before. So you can definitely tell this made him feel some kind of way, you know. And he pretty much lets him know that, look, I will not risk my integrity, my good name by bribing a judge. I'll resign right now if that's the kind of lawyer you want. And he kind of lets him know, you know what? You ain't going to be resigning nothing. You passed. And he was like, what? He's like, you passed. I was testing you. I've been burned before a few times by other lawyers I've had. I wanted to see if you were going to be loyal. And that, you know, and, and were you going to have the right integrity to be my general counsel? So he's now looking at Hunter with a different set of eyes like, you trifling motherfucker. You mean to tell me this whole time you was playing games? And you literally was just testing to see what I was going to do like you hired me just to fuck around with me so yeah I can definitely feel why Titus felt the way he felt in regards to that so then we see that um, Bella's ass goes home you know feeling her feeling her judge she gets into the damn house the whole damn house is empty Evan and his simple ass cleaned out the entire house except for Joaquin's room. Joaquin's room was the only room that was furnished, but everything else he got rid of. And pretty much she tried to call him, the, the damn number was disconnected. And she starts sobbing. I'm like, bitch, that's exactly what the fuck you get. I don't feel sorry for you because when you play dirty, you, you, you can't get mad when you get dirty results, bitch. That's what the fuck you get with your stupid ass. Uh, you know, live long and prosper, bitch. <laughs> so then we see that Stephanie goes to talk to Marilyn. She tries to sweet talk Marilyn and everything. And, you know, about the whole Delta New Project. And she pretty much lets her know, um, Stephanie, I leave Delta New to Marvin, and he doesn't get involved with my um, philan you know, philanthropic efforts. And then she was saying that, oh yes, I've been doing a lot of work, and you know, Juniper has been a godsend. And we already see that Stephanie can't stand the girl Jun um, Juniper, you know. Oh, oh yeah, I think um, Juniper. That's um, what's his face. Uh, that's Lori's mother, um, Hunter's wife. So Juniper and Marilyn are good friends. And Juniper has been helping her with this, you know, with this itinerary for their, for their philanthropic event this year. So Stephanie feels some kind of way. She was like, look, I know you two families don't get along, but I can, but um, Juniper is my friend, so consider me Switzerland. 
and she's like, wow, Marilyn, you never like to pick size, you know, um, which is why you didn't cut, you know, um, um, Amara off at this, what she did to me. But she's like, you still mad at that? That's like ages ago. She's like, yeah, but I still got to see this bitch on a daily, and that's what's pissing me off, you know. And then she asks, well, how's Cleo, you know, Khalil? And he's like, yeah, she's like, well, he's fine, you know. He hasn't mentioned Carly lately, though, and I think Khalil knows the truth about Carly, but he hasn't said anything. Um, and then they both come together. It was like, oh, yeah, we got to... We got to up our matchmaking efforts so if we're going to have the wedding of the century. Like, they up there planning they kids' lives and going to try to make them get married so it can look good for them. Like, just so self-serving. It's ridiculous. Use they damn kids as pawns in they, in they fucking political schemes. Crazy as shit. So then we see that um, Carly and Lori are getting massages and everything. They talking about, she's talking about going to this retreat in Arizona. You know, she's got her eyes covered. Then the next thing you know, she feels somebody, you know, tickling her ivory. And we see that they're going to lure them, excuse the massagers. And she's like, yeah, let me give you a ride right now and give your massage a happy ending. I'm like, Lori's a damn freak. And I'm like, mm, when they find that out, Stephanie going to hit the fucking roof. So, then we see that Stephanie and Evan meet up. You know, he asks her about how things go with Marilyn. She's like, you know, um, she didn't say no, so she didn't deny it. But really, she just pretty much said that, look, I don't deal with that. That's my husband's territory, and I don't get into that. I don't go there. But, you know, but then she says that, oh, yeah, but, um, you know, um... So pretty much she was saying, so she pretty much lets it be known that Amara's a fucking problem. You know, she comes to my office talking about Greg Peters, and yeah, your sister and her have been getting real chummy with each other. Um, you know, and, you know, she's like a crafty little bitch, you know, talking about, you know, Amara, and she's using your sister to not only come after Greg, you know, but she's also coming after you as well through your own sister, you know. And she pretty much says that, look, you know, she needs to be taken care of. And he's like, don't you fuck with my sister, um, Stephanie. I ain't with that shit. Um, but she was like, okay, fine. But she needs to know who who Amara is. Um, and And he was like, you know, well, fine, we need to come up with a plan. And she lets him know it's already in motion. So we literally see that's what S Stephanie and, and um, Evan's marriage is. It's a marriage of stability and convenience. And they literally just play senator, senators, um, sinister games with each other. It's kind of like the same marriage as Jim and Catherine Cryer on the haves and the have-nots. There's no love there at all. Um... So then we see that Titus is at home with Amara. He's saying that he he's one he's wishing that he may not have taken his job and that Hunter is not the person he thought he was. I'm like, yeah, you thought that this was an honest man and you see that he's really a low key racist bastard and he's using you as his token black. Um and pretty much, you know, and then, and like, you know, Amara called it out like, so what? You didn't know that he was a privileged white billionaire? who snaps his fingers at a tablet and a you know you know for a tablet in a burning bush I was like yeah a white man who thinks he's God she called it out you know but then she was like I feel sorry for Stephanie you know and then he was like did we do the right thing by moving to Atlanta and she's like well hell you know I'm getting paid way better than I ever have you know Deja's at that private school you know, we can out of four things that we couldn't have before. You know, she pulls out her new red bottoms. And she was, that shoe looked beautiful as shit, though. And all of a sudden, we see that there's somebody's looking in their window. And they said that, you know what? I want to go upstairs and shower. You need to join me. And when you get out, wear them heels. And only those heels. 
So they see that they in a lovey-dovey situation. And we see that Damien done found out where they live at. And he looking out the window. I'm like, Titus going to fuck you up, uh, Damien. Because he is adamant that Damien Collins is out the picture. But wait till he make that damn connection. That damn Stephanie has something to do with that shit. And I was just like, that shit's creepy. So then we see that um, that Bella goes to see the procurement the, um, the procurement officer, you know, for that airport location. She brings a dress trying to embellish her, but the lady, the um, the, the director lets her know, like, um, sweetie, it's illegal for you to be here. You need to leave now. And she's like, but won't you take the dress? And she's like, I can't take nothing from you. You need to get that out. You need to get out of here. She's like, but you need to feel the fabric. Feel the fabric. You never felt anything like this. Feel the fabric. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. And she actually touches the fabric. She's like, you know what? I'm going to leave this here with you. I, you never seen me. You know, you never, I, I was never here. But just give it some thought, you know, because I am an artist who's trying to extend her brand. And I will be great for that location. So she leaves. And then all of a sudden, we see that she goes in the back. Tell me why the fuck Evan's there. And he's like, who was that? He said, your mistress. And she was like, you know, I can't keep doing this shit with you. And he's like, you know, I I'll take care of it. You know. And he kisses her. And then he says that, you know, I need some stress relief. Next thing you know, we see that he takes off his robe and she takes off hers. They got a whole dominatrix session going on and tells him to assume the position. I'm like, whoa! Like, damn, Evan, what else you into, bruh? I'm like, shit, you banging Bella, you banging your secretary, you messing around with the procurement officer, and she pretty much, you know, uh, dominating and beating that ass. I'm like, damn, Evan, what else do you got going on, bruh? I'm thinking, shit, Evan probably fuck any damn thing. Like, that shit gagged me. I'm like, what? And we see him get down on all fours, and she's just like, Psh. I'm like, oh, shit. s and <laughs> I'm like, damn. Evan's a wild boy, and Evan got a whole lot with him. So that's what I have, y'all. If I miss anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Ambitions. I am loving this show. So until next time, everybody, take care.